Hi guys, we're starting a new book today. It's called How Tia Lola Came To. It says visit, that's crossed out, and then it says stay by Julia Alvarez. How Tia Lola Came To Stay. Chapter one, Tia Lola Comes To Visit. Why can't we just call her Aunt Lola? Miguel asks his mother. Tomorrow their aunt is coming from the Dominican Republic to visit with them in their new home in Vermont. Tonight they are unpacking the last of the kitchen boxes before dinner. Because she doesn't know any English, his mother explains. Tia is the word for aunt in Spanish, right, Mami? Juanita asks. When their mother's back is turned, Juanita beams, Miguel. A know-it-all smile. Their mother is gazing sadly at a blue bowl she has just unpacked. So you see, Miguel, if you call her aunt, she won't know you're talking to her. That's fine, Miguel thinks. I won't have much to say to her except, adios, goodbye. But he keeps his mouth shut. He knows why his mother is staring at the blue bowl, and he doesn't want to upset her in the middle of a memory. So please, Miguel, his mother is saying, just call her Tia Lola, okay? Miguel kind of nods, kind of just jerks his head to get the, his hair out of his eyes. It can go either way. It's the last day of January. Four weeks ago during Christmas break, they moved from New York City into a farmhouse. Mommy rented from a realtor by phone. Miguel and Juanita's parents are getting a divorce. And Mommy has been hired, by a com hired to be a counselor in a small college in Vermont. Papi is a painter who sets up department store windows at night in the city. Every morning, instead of walking to school as they used to do in New York City, Miguel and Juanita wait for the bus by the mailbox. It is still dark when they board and drive down the dirt road just past their neighbor's sheep farm to town. It is again dark when they get home at the end of the day and let themselves into the chilly house. Mommy doesn't like the idea of Miguel and Juanita being alone without an adult. And that, in large part, is why she invited Tia Lola to come for a visit. Why not ask Papi to come up and stay with them instead? Miguel wants to suggest. He doesn't really understand why his parents can't stay married, even if they don't get along. After all, he doesn't get along great with his little sister. But his mother always says, Juanita's your familia, Miguel. Why can't she say the same thing to herself about Papi? But Miguel doesn't dare suggest this to her. These days, Mommy bursts out crying at anything. When they first drove up to the old house with its peeling white paint, Mommy's eyes filled with tears. It looks haunted, Juanita gasped. It looks like a dump, Miguel corrected his little sister. Even Dracula wouldn't live here. But then catching a glimpse of his mother's sad face, he added quickly, so you don't have to worry about ghosts, Nita. His mother smiled through her tears, grateful to him for being a good sport. After some of the boxes have been cleared away, the family sits down to eat dinner. They each get to pick the can they want to bring to the table. Juanita chooses SpaghettiOs, their mother chooses red beans, and Miguel chooses a can of Pringles. Only this one night, so we can finish getting settled for Tia Lola, their mother explains about their peculiar dinner. Every night she gets home so late from work, there is little time for unpacking and cooking. Mostly they have been eating in town at Rudy's restaurant. The friendly red-cheeked owner, Rudy, has offered them a special deal. Welcome wagon special, he calls it. Three meals for the price of one, and you guys teach me some Spanish. But even Miguel is getting tired of pizza and hot dogs with french fries on the side. Thanks for a yummy dinner, Mommy Juanita is saying as if their mother has cooked all the food and put it in cans with labels marked Bogoya and SpaghettiOs, then just now reheated the food in the microwave. She always sees the bright side of things. Can I have some of those chips, Miguel? She, she asks her brother. This is my can, Miguel reminds her. But you can share, his mother reminds him. Pretend you're at the Chinese restaurant and we share all the plates. We're not Chinese, Miguel says. We're Latinos. At this new school, he, is, he has told his classmates the same thing. Back in New York, lots of other kids look like him. 
Some people even thought he and his best friend Jose were brothers. But here in Vermont, his black hair and brown skin stand out. He feels so different from everybody. Are you Indian? One kid asked him, impressed. Another asked if his color wears out like a tan. He hasn't made one friend in three weeks. I didn't say to pretend, pretend you're Chinese, his mother sighs, just to pretend that you're at a Chinese restaurant. She suddenly looks as if she's going to cry. Miguel shoves his can of chips over to Juanita, anything to avoid his mother bursting into tears again. She is staring down at her bowl as if she had forgotten it was there underneath her food the whole time. From that blue bowl, Miguel's mother and father fed each other spoonfuls of cake the day they got married. There is a picture of that moment in the white album in the box marked albums slash attic that their mother says they might unpack sometime later in the distant future, maybe. Juanita must have also noticed how sad mommy looks. She begins asking questions about Tia Lola because it makes their mother happy to talk about their favorite aunt back on the island where she was born. How old is she, mommy? Who? Tia Lola, mommy. Tia Lola que viene mañana, Juanita says in Spanish. She, it also makes her mother happy when they use Spanish words. Tia for aunt, mañana for tomorrow. Tia Lola, who comes tomorrow. Is she real old? Actually, nobody knows how old Tia Lola is. She won't tell, their mother says. She is smiling again. Her eyes, her eyes have a faraway look. She's so young at heart, it doesn't matter. She'll be fun to have around. Is she married, Juanita asks. Mommy has told them they have tons of cousins back on the island, but, there are, but are any of them Tia Lola's kids? I'm afraid Tia Lola never did, did get married, Mommy sighs. But kids, do me a favor. Just don't ask her about it, okay? Why not? Juanita wants to know. It's a sensitive issue, her mother explains. Juanita is, Juanita is making her I don't understand this math problem face, but why didn't she get married? Miguel speaks up before his mother can answer. He doesn't know how, he, how this thought has popped into his head, but it suddenly pops out of his mouth before he can stop it. She didn't get married she, so she wouldn't have to get divorced, ever. Mommy blinks back tears. She stands up quickly and leaves the room. Miguel studies the bean picture on the outside of the can his mother has picked for dinner. One little bean has a Mexican hat. You made mommy cry, Juanita blubbers tearfully and follows their mother out of the room. Miguel finds himself alone in a drafty kitchen with all the dirty bowls and plates to wash and the table to wipe. As he cleans up the sink, he glances out the window at the frosty world outside. Up in the sky, the moon is just the tiniest silver sliver. It looks as if someone has gobbled up most of it and left behind only this bit of light for Miguel to see by. For the first time since he heard the news, he is glad his aunt is arriving tomorrow. It might be nice to have a fourth person who is still talking to him in the house, even if her name is Tia Lola. The next morning at the airport, Miguel's mother cannot find a parking space. You kids go in so we don't miss your aunt. I'll join you as soon as I find a spot. I'll help you, Miguel offers. Miguel, amor, how can you help me? You don't have a license. The cops will take you in if they catch you driving, his mother teases. As nervous as Miguel is feeling about his aunt's visit and his new school and their move to Vermont, he thinks he wouldn't mind spending the next, full, next year all by himself in jail. Por favor, honey, would you go inside with your sister and look for Tia Lola? His mother's sweetened up voice is like a handful of chocolate chips from the package in the closet. Impossible to resist. Los quiero mucho, she calls out as to both children as they climb clamber out of the car. Love you too, Juanita calls back. The crowd swarms around them in the small but busy terminal. Juanita slips her hand into Miguel's. She looks scared, as if all that Spanish she has been showing off to their mother has just left on a plane to South America. You think you'll recognize her, she asks. 
We'll wait until somebody who looks like she's looking for us come off, comes out of the plane, Miguel says. He sure wishes his mother would hurry up and find a parking spot. Several businessmen rush by, checking their watches as if they are already late for whatever they have come for. Behind them, a grandma puts down her shopping bag full of presents, and two little boys run toward and throw, toward and throw their arms around her. A young guy turns in a slow circle as he, has, as he has gotten off at the wrong stop. A girl hugs her boyfriend, who kisses her on the lips. Miguel looks away. Where is this aunt of theirs? The crowd disperses, and still their aunt is nowhere in sight. Miguel and Juanita go up to the counter and ask the lady working there to please page their aunt. She doesn't know any English, Miguel explains, only Spanish. The woman in the blue suit has so many freckles, it looks as if someone has spilled a whole bag of them on her face. I'm sorry, kids. I took a little Spanish back in high school, but that was ages ago. I'll tell you what, I'll let you page your aunt yourself. She'll do it, Miguel nudges his sister forward. Even though he is older, Juanita is the one who is always throat showing off her Spanish to their father and mother. Juanita shakes her head. She looks scared. She looks about to cry. There's nothing to be scared of, Miguel encourages, as if he himself has paid his hand every day of his life. That's right, sweetie, the woman agrees, nodding to Juanita, but Juanita won't budge. Then turning to Miguel, the woman suggests, Seeing as scared as she is scared, why don't you do it instead? I don't speak Spanish. It's just technically a lie because he doesn't know. It isn't technically a lie because he doesn't know enough to speak Spanish in public to a whole airport terminal. You do it, Juanita sniffles. He knows, but he doesn't like to talk it, she explains to the airline lady. Just give it a try, the freckle lady says opening a little gate so they can come around the counter to an office on the other side. A man with a bald head and a tired face and earphones sits at a desk, turning dials on a machine. The lady explains that the children need to page a lost aunt who does not speak any English. Come here, son, the man beckons to Miguel. Speak right into this microphone. Testing, testing, he tries it out. The man adjusts some knobs and pushes his chair over so Miguel can stand beside him. Miguel looks down at the microphone. He can feel his stomach getting queasy and his mind going blank. All he can remember of his Spanish is Tia Lola's name and the word for hello. Hola, Tia Lola, Miguel says into the microphone. Then suddenly the corny words his mother says every night when she tucks him into bed, the one she has just called out when he and Juanita climbed out of the car pop out. Te quiero mucho. Juanita is looking at him surprised. Miguel scowls back. It's the only thing I can remember, he mutters, with all the stuffing popping out of those, with all the stuff popping out. These days, he's going to have to get a break for his mouth. I remember more, Juanita boasts. She steps up toward, forward, her fear forgotten, and she speaks into the microphone. Hola, Tia Lola, she says in a bright voice as if she's on TV announcing sunny weather tomorrow. Desperamos por el mostedor. She and Miguel will be waiting by the counter. Te quiero mucho, she closes just as Miguel has done. I love you lots. As Miguel and his sister walk out of the office, they hear a tremendous shout. It's, about, it's a shout in Spanish and it isn't a shout in English. It's a shout anyone, anywhere would understand. Everyone is mighty pleased to see them. On the other side of the counter stands their Aunt Lola. You can't miss her. Her skin is the same soft brown color as theirs. Her black hair is pulled up in a bun on her head with the pink hibiscus on top. She wears bright red lipstick and above her lip, she has a big black beauty mark. On her colorful summer dress, parrots fly toward palm trees and flowers, look ready to burst from the fabric as if, they, as if they can only figure out how. Behind their aunt, their mother is approaching in her hiking boots and navy blue parka, her red hat and mittens. Tia Lola, she cries out. They hug and kiss and hug again. 
When Tia Lola pulls away, the beauty mark above her lip is gone. Those two, Tia Lola is saying in Spanish to Miguel's mother as she points to him and Juanita, those two gave me my first welcome to this country. Ay, Juanita, ay, Miguel. She spreads her arms for her niece and nephew. Los quiero mucho. It is a voice impossible to resist. Like three handfuls of chocolate chips from the package in the closet, a can of Pringles and his favorite SpaghettiOs, all to himself. For the moment, Miguel forgets the recent move, his papi and friends left behind in New York. When Tia Lola wraps her around, arms around him, he hugs back just as hard as he can. All right, guys, that's the end of chapter one.